How you doing? I hope you're having a good day. I figured I would bring you outside for our devotional today. If you want to read something that's kind of interesting in light of everything that we're facing right now, I'd encourage you to open up to Matthew chapter 24 today. It's a scripture that comes just before the crucifixion of Jesus, and it's a scripture that happens out on the Mount of Olives. Jesus has just kind of left the temple, and they go out in nature, something like this, and sit down and kind of have a conversation together. And it's kind of really interesting what Jesus has to say in this particular scripture to his disciples because they are asking him about the end times and what to expect and what it's going to look like and, and how it's all going to kind of play out. And honestly, Jesus has some kind of scary things to say to them in this particular passage. He tells them about uh, famines and natural disasters that are going to come and, and hit the earth. Uh, he tells them about deceivers that will come and try to trick people. He tells them about wars and rumors of wars. He tells them about persecution and trouble that will come their way and that they will have to face as, as his disciples. He talks about uncertainty and how people will flock to anybody who seems to have an answer, but not to be tricked by that. And there's this tension in this entire chapter as you begin to read through it. You have this rough road that Jesus paints in front of uh, of his disciples that they are going to have to face or that future generations us are going to have to face but he, there's also a call in the middle of this chapter to be faithful that those who are faithful will be saved there are some scary things in this chapter that jesus tells his disciples that they will have to face but at the same time he also tells them not to be afraid in fact the 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 whole uh, discussion that he has here in this particular chapter starts off with him telling them not to be afraid. There's a theme that re runs throughout this entire chapter that uh, says that God will come and rescue his people. That we, as his people, should be watching for him, should be preparing our lives. But at the very same time, he also goes on to say that no one will know the day or the hour. Yet, I think the favorite part of this particular uh, passage for me comes at the end of it. If you look at the end of it, Jesus actually asks a question. He, he looks at his disciples, he says, says to them, uh, where do you think the master wants to find his servant when he returns? And then he answers his own question by saying this, doing the work that his master has put him in charge of. Man, I, I can't speak for you, but I know that's where I want to be found, is doing the work that my master has prepared for me. You know, what I'm about to say, I, I don't say lightly. I, I grew up in the church and in, in church culture. And, uh, you know, all my life I, I've been around people that are claiming that the end days are close. And just to be real honest and, and open with you here today, most of the time it, it usually bugs me when people go down that road and start claiming that these are the end days. It's not because I, I disagree with them. But, but to be honest with you, most of the time, I, I find that most people who have a tendency to kind of claim that kind of thing have some kind of, of agenda in the background. In fact, any time that I can ever remember somebody coming out and telling me personally, you know, that these are the end days, it was usually not to tell me that I shouldn't be afraid if I'm a Christian or, or that if I know Jesus, there's nothing to fear in the midst of this, or, or that if I, I, I love Jesus, uh, that, that I could have a relationship with him. Uh, usually what, what the person uh, is doing when they're, when they're doing that kind of conversation is they're using it as a weapon to kind of scare me and, and make me make some kind of fear-motivated decision. And I, I don't like that kind of thing. It, it actually kind of bugs me a little bit. The problem is, though, is that in our particular conversation today, I mean, there's this same tension that runs right in this particular scripture. If you look at chapter 24... Uh, and read down some of the words that Jesus says, I, I mean, this somewhat describes the very day in which we live right now in this time and age. I mean, a culture that does whatever it kind of feels like, um, a, a morality that seems to be slipping every day in our world, fear and uncertainty that seems to be sweeping our country right at the moment, devastating news of people worldwide that are are literally dying every day, that, that this could be you or me in the near future. I mean, I don't want it to be, but it could be you or me in the near future. Do I believe that there will be a day 
when all of this will come to an end? When Jesus will return for his own? You bet I do. Do I believe that these are the last days, that Jesus is coming soon? I don't know what to say about that. It seems as if the signs are showing it, but I'll tell you this, I hope so. Do I believe that these things are going to get worse and, and, and things are going to get bad in the last days? That even as Christians, we will suffer and that we will not escape those things? Well, honest truth is, the Bible tells me that as long as we live in this broken world, that there will be trials and there will be persecution and there will be difficult times. So what am I telling you to freak out? Actually, no. Uh, just the opposite, if, if you could say something just the opposite to that. Uh, if you know Jesus today, I, I want you to be assured that no matter uh, what comes our way, that God won't abandon us and that he will return for his people. It's promised to us in Scripture. If you don't know him this morning, I, I want to give you the wonderful news that you can know him, that there's no time like the present, not because you need to be afraid. You see, none of these things that are happening right now in the world right now honestly bother me too much, and, and here's the reason why. It's not because I, I, I'm looking forward to death or anything of the sort, but, but I am ready for that if it comes my way. A long time ago, I made a decision to follow Jesus. and I gave my life over to him, and it's not like I haven't done things wrong in my life that, that I have to be ashamed of. There's not like there's a thousand things that when I get before God that, that he won't be able to point at me and say, you did this. But the wonderful story of Easter is that Jesus stepped in our place and that he will be there on judgment day to claim that everything that we have ever deserved has been already paid. And here's the best thing about this entire thing. Because of that, Jesus has forgiven me. For the things that I've done wrong and, and now I live for him and because of that today when he shows up someday if it's today if it's tomorrow if it's not in my lifetime if it's beyond my last breath until I take my last breath what he will find and if, if I have any control over it is me doing his work when my time is up Whatever that looks like, whenever that is, Jesus has promised to come and take me home. How about you today? Are you ready for that? Because you can be. You know, God is not waiting to beat you over the head. God actually loves you, and he cares about you. That is the entire story of Easter, is that he came to make a way for you. And if you know that this morning... Man, you should take some time and just kind of glory in that today. Read chapter 24 and, and read these things, but don't be afraid. Be faithful. Don't put off today what you may not get a chance to be able to do tomorrow. Man, God is faithful, and he is waiting for you. Man, that, that's an incredible message today. You see, the whole heart of this Easter season is that God made a way so that his children could come home. I hope that you have a blessed day. Can't speak for you, but I know for me, I'm heading out for a walk.